Chapter 7 Return of the Legend. The overnight festivities were in full swing. Flutters, Rainbow Dads, Thunder Lane, and the rest of the weather team congratulated themselves on the job well done clearing the sky. Flutters started to show off how much of a party animal she really is, and how much she loves making others laugh. Thunder Lane broke apart from the weather team when the Wonderbolts came to address him. They spoke about their plans for the show during the raising of the sun. The yellow and orange pigs, the Spitfire, was a good mare, but she tended to be a bit obsessed about overplanning a fence. She probably get along well with Twilight. But it's that overplanning that makes the Wonderbolt fence so flawless. Well, that's why she's the leader of the Wonderbolts. That and her flying skills are unmatched. But Thunderlane was getting an earful for not being in uniform, claiming he was being unprepared. Rarity and Maud Pye were there, of course, seeing as Rarity was responsible for the decorations. Rarity, of course, was a social butterfly, but Maud, you'd be forgiven if you thought she was just one of Rarity's mannequins. In fact, many ponies likely did believe that, considering just how far they jumped when he saw her move or talk. A trio of flower gardeners even fainted on the spot. Hi, girls! Hi! A team of medley in Final Scratch, or rather DJ Pon 3 as he prefers to be referred to while performing, were swapping back and forth between classical and modern music styles. But occasionally, they would combine their two very different music styles into one and make them work. What's even more impressive is these fusion style moments were utterly unrehearsed. It was a testament to how unsick the two sisters were. Sometimes, while Octavia was playing, Vinyl would join in to accompany the music. Other times, it was the other way around, with Octavia joining in on one of Vinyl's sets. The only rehearsed part was specifically for the raising of the sun. Many members of the Apple family were still on the farm since this was unusually a family event for them. The Apple family reunion didn't usually match up with the summer sun celebration, though. This being the millennial summer sun celebration being a peculiar case, though. So, a few representatives of the Apple family, along with Carrot Top, were there to see it that food was always in stock. Many cults and fillies were running around, ecstatic at the prospect of being able to stay up all night. Some of the younger ones, though, were showing signs of fatigue. They were either too young to be late up this late, or didn't get a nap in before the event. So they weren't prepared to stay up all night. It wasn't uncommon for the parents to let them go to sleep. After all, they were still young, but this was still a special occasion, so many parents hoped that their folks were they were fall asleep would do so earlier so they could be woken up to see the Princess Celestia raise the sun. All the while, Trixie was just content watching. Though she did mingle here or there, she was just in awe at how different the ponies this little hamlet were for, different from those of the big cities like Carolot. Many Carolot nobles believed ponies from small country towns like this were just uncivilized hicks who were completely distracted from society. But the reality was the complete opposite. Even the less stoppers Cantalosians fell victim to believing some of the stereotypes, but the reality was completely different. Even being a smaller community meant that nearly every pony knew each other, so nearly every pony was social, welcoming because of it. In a big city, most ponies were just faces. It's for this reason Trixie found herself hoping Ponyville would never find itself growing too big. Because if it did, this community feeling would be lost in the crowd. It would make for a great tourist attraction, though, seeing just how welcoming these ponies were. Trixie also noticed something else. Although most of the cults and fillies were playing, there was one filly in particular that the rest stayed away from. It was Apple Bloom. Despite her bad behavior, specifically towards Oculus, it was still a sad sight to see her be avoided like the plague. That was until a pink filly with a tiara, followed by a brown stallion with a sleek black, slightly graying mane, and a dark pink mare with a blatantly obvious no job arrived. This family three seemed to be more fitting as Carolot nobles. The stallion had an air of authority to him, but also a kindness similar to the likes of fancy pants. The mare, however, was so snooty that she looked like she would look down even upon the Carolot nobles who weren't royalty. Heh, <laughs> maybe she got the nose job so it'd be easier for her to look down on the ponies, Tracy thought to herself. The filly went to Apple Bloom as if she were utterly ignorant of her bully status. But as they hugged, Tracy was thankful she wasn't completely alone. Apple Bloom looked up to being Magatoss, presumably icy as he could play with her friend. The elder siblings seemed to be giving instructions because Apple Bloom was still in trouble. But the look into Philly's face was suggested that he gave his permission. This place would be good for Oculus, Tracy thought out loud. It's about time for me to start my magic show. 
Trixie walked over to the stage to start her magic show. Meanwhile, Twilight was having trouble sleeping. Something was wrong about her sleeping in Celestia's bed. It's not like it's the first time. When Celia and Trixie were younger, and one of them had a bad day or a nightmare, Celestia would offer for them to sleep in bed. Aww! I just want to let you know that's totally my head canon that that happens in, can in the actual show. They didn't always stay in the castle. Sometimes he would stay at Twilight's home. But for Trixie, her home was all the way in Las Pegasus. And Twilight's parents couldn't just take her in. They were more than willing, but they couldn't afford it. So Trixie would stay in the castle, and Twilight would be there with her so she would have a friend. Something that Twilight had never questioned until now was the fact that whenever one of them had a nightmare, the other did as well. They were all the very different nightmares, but they always seemed to have nightmares on the same night. So it wasn't uncommon for both of them to sleep with Celestia simultaneously. But the night was different. The bed was certainly familiar to the unicorn, but it had smaller than she remembered, or rather she was bigger. But the fact that Celestia wasn't here in her bed with her didn't feel right. It's not that she needed to cover Celestia, so it doesn't feel right without her not there. Or perhaps what made it feel strange was the fact Trixie wasn't here. Whatever the reason, Twilight just couldn't sleep. Maybe she was worried about the situation she was put in. It's not like she needed to do much. Celestia assured that she just didn't feel like she was ready for this kind of responsibility. Resigning herself to a sleepless night, Twilight gets out of bed and watches the library balcony. She was down at Pointville. Despite being the dead night, the little town seemed to be active. It was a testament to how the Hamlet would celebrate its special offense. <laughs> Trixie must be having the time of her life down there. Twilight laughed quietly. She looked up to the moon. She took in the image of the craters that made up the image of the Mare of the Moon. For some odd reason, she noticed the image seemed more... She didn't know what it was. It simply seemed to be... Waiting in anticipation? The thought brought her attention to the surrounding area. There were four stars that she didn't recognize. So I took pride in her knowledge of the night nice sky. Those four stars didn't belong. As she watched, she took notice of something else. The interloping stars were slowly moving towards the moon. Based on the speed, the stars would reach the moon in approximately one hour. She looked at the clock. It's 4.32 a.m., approximately one hour before sunrise. Tracy removed the blades from the box and opened it up. I had the pony inside to climb out. He said this many section to make sure he was back in one piece. It was that! I must end my show! Tracy called out to her audience, who ended up complaining, Now, now, I love Coutinho, but I hate to steal the spotlight from our true star, or rather, the Sun Princess! This got the crowd going, being reminded why this event was happening in the first place. Tracy left the stage, clearing the magic props that she did in order to make way for Mayor Mayor. Mace Mayor took to the stage and began the main event. Ladies and gentlemen, as Mayor of Bonneville, it is my great pleasure to announce the beginning of the Summer Sun celebration, Mayor Mayor said, earning a cheer from the crowd. In just a few moments, our town will witness the magic of the sunrise and celebrate this, the longest day of the year. And now, it is my great honor to introduce you, the ruler of our land, the very pony who gives us the sun and moon every each and every day, the good, the wise, the bigger of harmony to all Equestria. Rarity went off stage, waiting for a cue, and the crowd file said, scratch said in anticipation, Ready. Princess Celestia! Rarity pulled over the curtain, and no pony was there. Oh. There were whispers of the crowd. One says whisper came from Trixie. This can't be good. Remain calm, if pony, Mayor Mayor said, trying to calm the crown. There must be a reasonable explanation. Is she playing high and sink? Flair said eccentrically. Rarity came out from behind the curtain after checking out Celestia. She's gone! The crowd gasped at this revelation, but one eccentric Pegasus. Oh, she's good. There was another gasp of the crowd as a dark mist coalesced on the stage where Princess Celestia was supposed to have been. The mist took the form of a large pony with wings and a horn. The mist solidified into a black alicorn with a mane and tail that reflected the night sky. I could just get sense of growing malice coming from the mist. But once it took a solid form, the malice grew exponentially. Like a hard rain that suddenly becoming an ocean wave drain crashing down on her. Oh no! 
It's the mayor for that story. Was the princess trying to warn me? Oh, my beloved subjects, the mayor said, her tone dripping with disdain. It's been so long since I've seen your precious sun little sun-loving faces. Side note, I love the foreshadowing in Nightmare Moon's section. When we see Skulu, Sweet Bell, and Apple Bloom all cuddly together underneath that table. It's such a nice celebration of foreshadowing. I love it. What did you do with our princess? Final Star Official Voice called out. The unicorn mare being held back effortlessly by Maud Pie. The dark alicorn laughed, though there was no humor in her voice. Ha 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 ha! Why, am I not royal enough for you? Do you not know who I am? Oh, I guess in game. Flair said excitedly. Um, okay, Smokes, how about Queen Mimi? No, Black Stewie, Black Stewie! Flair's rivalry king, nothing but incoherent mumbles, and suddenly put his hoof in her mouth to shut up for all their sakes. Does my crown no longer count now that I've been imprisoned for a thousand years? The evil alicorn questioned. Did you not recall the legend? Did you not see the signs? You're the Mary of the Moon. I guess his meek voice said, though it might as well be a shell from how quiet the room had become. Your nightmare moon! There's another grass of the crowd. I go slaying bullets. But he weren't of fear, at least not entirely. She was straining herself. Well, well, well. Some pony who remembers me. Nightmare Moon said, confirming what Oculus said. Then you also know why I'm here. You know, another reason why this show really impressed me, especially with the first episode, was Nightmare Moon's first appearance. I mean, how cool can you get? Mystified... Talking with pride and arrogance about how, oh yes, he's awesome. It's straight out of a good kid's anime. It really works well, and it's well done. And personally, I think this is Tavon St. Germain's best performance as Nightmare Moon. Oculus didn't answer, but it was not an act of defiance. Whereas because of the strain being put on her, or simply because she didn't know the full legend was unknown... Nightmare Moon chose to fly down to the Fall Philly to get a closer look. Oh, I love Nightmare Moon, and this fic is doing a great job of reminding us why we love her. But Tracy would have none of that, galloping as fast as her host could take her to protect her daughter from this monster. But it was with the alicorn's mane wiped at the alicorn, unicorn, tossing her side and seemingly no one for it at all. Using her pizza-head style mane, Nightmare Moon lifted Oculus's chin to look into her eyes. I see. You're not what you appear to be, are you? She said, causing Oculus to gulp in fear. I can't have your kind infesting my equestrian- Ah! Thunderlings attacked did little more to startle the alicorn. It was enough distraction for Ma to grab Oculus to bring her to safety. Remember this day, little ponies. For it, will, for it is your last. Nightmare Moon said, recovering for the attack. From this moment forth, the night will last forever! <laughs> Nightmare Moon cackled, her mane creating a cloud that cracked with thunder. Caesar! Mayor Mary instructed, only she knows what the princess is! Another wonderful took flight attacked the dark alicorn. Stand back, you foes! Nightmare Moon laughed as a bolt of lightning struck from her mane, distracting the Wonderbolts. Nightmare Moon then dispersed into mist and headed forward towards the Everfree Forest. I think another reason why I love Nightmare Moon's appearance is that it makes me think of Maleficent's first appearance. You know, in the classic Sleeping Beauty, when the whole entire crowd hustles over it, in comes Maleficent. And everybody is feared of her. Everyone knows and respects her. They know what she's capable of, and they don't want to make a move against her. I feel like rewatching the first two episodes again. I'll be right back. Thunderlane flew out to chase Nightmare Moon. As he did, Oculus was clearly not doing well. 
Did the Abbey of Malice and Nightmare Moon also like a light rain, and her presence was an ulcer wave of malice? And now terrified ponies of Ponyville, as well as the confusion and fear of all the ponies in Equestria, was like drowning a tsunami. Her breathing had became labored, and Ma could tell she was burning up. Not just because of the involuntary release of her disguise, she was now fully exposed, her true form revealed. Oh, oh, bye. Oculus whimpered before passing out. Just he had just recovered from the attack from Nightmare Moon, was he heard Oculus call out. It may have been a whimper, but to Trixie, it was the only sound in the world. She dashed to her daughter to see her passed out in her undisguised form. Oculus! Trixie said. Don't just be of a worried whisper. Trixie had taken Oculus back to their temporary room to care for her. Meanwhile, although many point fills, fillings went back to cover their own homes to get some sleep, there was still a group of ponies in Town Hall. Maud, I saw you didn't react to Oculus cutting fire and taking it to that thing! Randy exclaimed. How could you tell? Rainbow Dash cut in. She doesn't react to anything. I have an eye for details, Randy explained. That, combined with knowing Maud for years, results in me being able to see reactions in Maud that nobody else would be able to detect. Huh? It means that Randy has special eyes, Flares elaborated. Kind of cool, Spawn, Mac added. I knew ever since the train ride, Maud said. If you didn't think to tell me, Verity asked. I did think to tell you, Maud said monotonously, but it wasn't my secret to tell. Yeah, well, Nightmare Moon seemed to know what she was too, Thunderlane said. For all we know, she's been a spy for Nightmare Moon this entire time. That well, doesn't make any sense, Octavia said. Why not? Why would Nightmare Moon be want to eliminate her own spy? Vile asked rhetorically. It sounded like Nightmare Moon knew what she was and considered her a threat. Does it really matter what she is? Flutters asked. Well, she on the outside isn't as important as who she is on the inside. Flutters is right, Rarity sighed. I may not know the full extent of what she is, but I can't deny that seeing her with C.D. Bell when they first met was simply divine. And a silver spoon wouldn't stop talking about seeing her again when she met Oculus, Octavia added. It was my heart to see her with that much energy. A priest sure that Rumble has a crest iron, Rainbow Dash said with a cheeky grin. That moment, Tracy came out in front of the guest room. She was desperately trying to hide her emotions. Silver Spoon, Sweetie Belle, and Rumble are still worried about Oculus, Tracy said with a laugh. <laughs> However, there was no joy about it. It's like they don't even know that she's something completely different than what they thought. It's because they didn't make friends with what she is. Final said, they made friends with who she is. I'm sorry I got angry when I got back from chasing Nightmare Moon, Thunderlane said. I didn't see the moment Oculus lost her disguise, so I assumed she was a monster that Nightmare Moon left behind. And you were too proud to admit you were wrong, Nightmare Big Mac asked. I suppose it was that combined with being scared, Thunderlane admitted. I suppose I should explain myself, Oculus said. Tracy said, Oculus is known as a changeling. As you may have guessed, it's a rice that can size itself or something, or somebody else. The disguise you saw was of her own making, so she's not stealing any pony's identity. However, changelings feed on love and kindness to survive. Because of how much the Carolot citizens are like, she's afraid of dropping her disguise for any pony other than those closest to her. Many ponies in Carolot know of her true form already, which is why she's so sheltered. Just like how she feeds on positive emotions, she's also affected by negative emotions. That's right, she reacted so badly to help a bloom, Ada, Big Mac asked. Most likely, Trixie said. Although I've never seen her react in such a way, it's also why she's so ravenous when she eats your apples. You put so much love and care into growing them that it lets an imprint on them. Well, I guess we do put a lot of love into growing our apples, Big Mac said proudly, but the jovial moment ended quickly when he saw the stress on the cornflower unicorn's face. Like I said, she feeds off of positive emotions, but also reacts badly to negative emotions. And with the hatred coming from Nightmare Moon, combined with the terror that the citizens of Ponyville are feeling, as well as the fear and confusion all around Equestria, it's too much for her. The negative emotions are acting as a poison to her. Tracy did her best to keep her composure until now. 
but she couldn't hold it in and broke down to tears. <laughs> Oculus is dying! 